Indigenous women's groups of more than 170 native peoples in Brazil resume protests to demand justice, freedom, and the demarcation of their ancestral lands. The construction of the Nord Stream 2 gas pipeline has been completed, as announced by Russian energy giant Gazprom. After a year of governance vacancy and a country economically collapsed, Lebanese top officials agreed to form a new government. From the headquarters of Terrazur English in Havana, this is from the South. I am Ray Gomez. We begin in Brazil, where indigenous women's groups of more than 172 native peoples resume protests to demand justice, freedom, and the demarcation of their ancestral lands. Spokespersons of the National Articulation of Indigenous Women Warriors of the Ancestral informed that the activity planned for Thursday was rescheduled due to threats from supporters of President Bolsonaro. In addition to the march to the Supreme Court, a public hearing on violence against indigenous women and a round of conversation with native women militants of the Workers' Party are also scheduled for this Friday. The Aboriginal women also remain united with more than a thousand demonstrators who have been camping for three weeks to follow the outcome of the trial in the Federal Supreme Court on the demarcation of native lands. The cold election silence period began in Argentina after closing of the campaign for the primary open simultaneous and mandatory elections known as PASO. In accordance with Article 64 of the National Electoral Code, as of this Friday, political acts and proselytizing activities are prohibited. During this period of electoral silence, politicians and citizens are not allowed to disseminate their pre-electoral service and advertisement. According to the regulators, social networks uh, will also be monitored during the electoral silence. The electoral authority explained that these rules are dictated so that Argentines can reflect without interference on what their electoral choice will be and go on Sunday to exercise the right to vote, complying with the biosecurity measures. Several Latin American nations will propose to the United States and Canada to review the future of the Organization of American States, OAS. The matter will be first discussed in Mexico next September 18th during the summit of the community of Latin American and Caribbean states, SALAC. The Secretary of Foreign Affairs, Marcelo Ebrard, explained that before making any decision regarding the future of the OAS, the proposals of the select member states will be heard and communicated to Canada and the United States during the first half of 2022. The announcement was made at the end of the high-level economic dialogue held on Thursday in Washington, D.C., where crucial issues on migration and the economy were also discussed, uh, which in the words of the Mexican foreign minister and his team, was a success. <coughs> Regarding the Organization of American States, on September 18th in Mexico, there will be a summit of the community of Latin American and Caribbean states in Mexico City. We have already confirmed the participation of all the countries. In some cases, most of them will be the presidents or state presidents, and in other cases, the foreign ministers. The main theme is that we have to prepare for 2022. The proposal that we are going to make to the United States and Canada of what would be the different future of the Organization of American States. Would it be replaced by another organization? How would it work? That would be done on September 18th. Unstoppable violence in Colombia rages against uh, the most disadvantages. In the last 24 hours, uh, more than 300 people have been displaced in rural areas of the northeastern department of Norte de Santander. They arrive working and with the little they have been able to pick up on their backs. The residents of the town of Banco de Arena in Cucuta have had to leave their homes in emergency due to threats from illegal armed groups. According to the Ombudsman Office, there are more than 300 people, many of them children, and they are being attended to by this institution and also by the mayor's office of Cucuta. In the midst of the exodus of its residents, a humanitarian commission headed by the Secretary of Post-Conflict and Culture of Peace went to the township to support the humanitarian contingency plan. 
The mayor of Cúcuta, Jairo Jañas, asked for a reinforced military presence and assured that more than 20 illegal armed groups are active in the area. Also in Colombia, the Minister of Information and Communication Technology, Karen Abudinan, submitted her resignation to Ivan Duque's government after accusations against her of alleged corruption. I step down in sorrow for the circumstances that the country is aware of, but in peace after having fulfilled my duty. I acted with honesty and transparency. Those who today take satisfaction in humiliating me will someday when the truth prevails in all its splendor, recognize their mistake. I resign in the hope that in the coming days, the administration of justice will take the appropriate decisions against those who cheated society. The perpetrators of this episode must be punished in an exemplary manner. On Thursday, the Chilean Constitutional Legislative and Justice Commission of the Lower House of the National Congress passed the same-sex marriage bill. The ruling is a new advantage for the homosexual integration and liberation movement in order to achieve the state protection of all the couples and families, regardless of their sexual orientation or gender identity. The movement spokeswoman, Daniela Andrade, said that the organization took a new step towards uh, equality and has been so elusive despite the the fact that the universality of the human rights uh, and the international commitments uh, assumed by Chile have been uh, on the side of real equality for all couples and families uh, for many years. Now the Commission that uh, unanimously approved this legal proposal began the discussion in particular of the text to advance in its final approval and achieve its uh, enactment as a law. We'll be right back after this very short break. Welcome back. Russian energy giant Gazprom announced uh, that uh, construction of the Nord Stream 2 gas pipeline has been completed. The project is set to double natural gas supplies uh, from Russia to Germany by bypassing Ukraine. Rising uh, from uh, Russia's Baltic coast uh, to northeastern Germany, the underwater 1,200 kilometers pipeline follows the same route as the Nord Stream 1, which was completed over a decade ago. Like its predecessor, the Nord Stream 2 will be able to pipe 55 billion cubic meters of gas per year to Europe, increasing the region's access to relatively cheap uh, natural gas at a time of falling domestic production. This gas project had raised tensions between the bloc and the United States since they claimed that it diverts supplies from an existing route and can be used as a geopolitical weapon. On Friday, Chileans living in the UK and their supporters rejected the visit uh, of President Sebastián Piñera to London. The demonstrators uh, gathered outside the Prime Minister Boris Johnson's official residence in central London, chanting Piñera murderer in reference uh, to massive human rights violations uh, under his presidency, and specifically the brutal repression of the late 2019 social unrest. The protesters are also gathered outside the Chilean embassy, a short walk away for a vigil uh, between midday and uh, 2 p.m., marking the 48th anniversary of the September 11, 1973 coup against uh, then-President Salvador Allende. Piñera's trip to the UK is set to include a pre cop uh, meeting with uh, Alok Sharma and the Prime Minister, although this is viewed as a cynical attempt to greenwash Shelley's aggressive extractivist growth agenda, as the President gave uh, the go-ahead to the Domingo Mining Project and uh, rejected the Escazú Agreement to moves that could have uh, devastating consequences on Chile's natural resources, according to environmentalists. prisoners in Chile and for full reparations for the victims of state brutality. Tomorrow, 11th of September, marks the 48th anniversary of the violent Pinochet coup which overthrew the democratic government of Salvador Allende and no doubt many Chileans will be remembering the dark days of repression and political violence that all hoped had been gone for good. 
The TUC notes that allegations of crimes against humanity have been brought against President Piñera at the International Criminal Court by a coalition of human rights organizations in Chile. We call on the British government to condemn the brutal actions of the Piñera administration, which in the words of Amnesty International, has misused the law to criminalize protesters and engaged in multiple instances of excessive use of force. China's President Xi Jinping has spoken with his U.S. counterpart Joe Biden for the first time in seven months. The two heads of state uh, had in-depth and extensive strategy communication and exchanges on Peking Washington relations and relevant issues of mutual interest. This is only the second call between them since President Biden took office. U.S.-China relations have been tense, with clashes over issues like trade, espionage, and the pandemic which the Chinese leader said serves neither the fundamental interests of the people of the two countries nor the common interests of the countries around the world. Both mandatories agreed to maintain frequent contact by multiple means and to create conditions for further development of bilateral ties. A World Labour Organization report revealed that, unlike other times of instability, the COVID-19 resulting crisis caused the destruction of informal occupations and the loss of income of people working under these conditions in Latin America. ILO indicates that the report from informality, the region is experiencing an insufficient recovery of jobs. Furthermore, it indicated that the reduction in employment during the worst moments of the pandemic between the first and second quarters of 2020 reached more than 43 million jobs. The document points out that not even 30 percent of the jobs lost uh, have been recovered yet. In view of this situation, the region needs uh, to adopt a comprehensive, consensual and far-reaching policy agenda focused on people that supports uh, the creation of more formal jobs and protects uh, micro and small enterprises. Otherwise, uh, the ILO warned uh, that the impacts of the crisis will be prolonged and uh, will leave deep long-term social and labor scars in the region. On Thursday, Cuban doctors and scientists shared the results of the progress of domestically produced vaccines with experts from Harvard University. Scientists and directors of the Finlay Vaccine Institute and the Molecular Immunology Center of the University of Havana presented in detail the trial's results of the Sarerana O2, Suburana Plus, and Suburana O1 vaccines recognized and widely valued by their U.S. peers. The fact that they have been reported has also given the opportunity to present results that not only results of a phase one or a phase two, but results of a phase three of the intervention that has been done with the population of the combination of vaccines, of how the vaccination has been designed based on being able to combine heterologous vaccines, what results we have had not only in adults, but in adults over 60 years of age, and what results we have had in children and what result we have had in convalescence. The Minister of Tourism of Cuba, Juan Carlos Garcia, announced that the Caribbean nation reinforces the sanitary protocols to prevent and detect cases of COVID-19 in order to safely receive foreign visitors as of November 15th in an effort to reanimate uh, the main economic engine of the island. This is an opportunity. It is to be able to grow. It is to be able to build the gradual beginning of the tourist operation that benefits a large number of the Cuban economy sector, both in the state and non-state activity. Logically, we must start from the condition that by that date we will reach 90% of the population vaccinated. Condition defended, analyzed by our scientists, today there is doubt there are criteria. With the progress of vaccination, it must tend to improve a lot. And I am talking about the forecast we are talking about September, October, and to reach November with a really unquestionable condition. We must have confidence. We must have faith. We have it. We need it. We believe that everyone with the follow-up of our country, when a decision like this is taken, there is analysis, seriousness, and responsibility. 
Vietnam's capital Hanoi is ramping up vaccination for local residents as the local authorities aim to inoculate all adults by September 15th. Hanoi's uh, Department of Health uh, has urged uh, local authorities uh, not to impose a limit on the number of people uh, being vaccinated and to simplify procedures as vaccination has been conducted late into the evening in uh, more than a thousand spots. According to Vietnam's national website on COVID-19 vaccination, more than 70% of people over 18 have received at least one job in Hanoi, including people over 65 with uh, chronic diseases. The country is battling its most uh, serious COVID-19 outbreak so far with uh, nearly 500,000 infections and more than 14,000 deaths, the vast majority of which were recorded in the past few months. At my age, it would be very dangerous if I get infected, so I really wanted to be vaccinated as soon as possible but I have to follow the plan by the city authorities, depending also on the availability of vaccine. I am okay being vaccinated at this time. In some countries, they give priority to vaccinate people over 65, but the vaccination policy is flexible in different countries. I think it's not too late to be inoculated at this time, because our country gives priority to people who are in the front line to fight against the pandemic or workers. I think it's the right policy. We have more stories coming up after this final short break. Welcome back. On Friday, Lebanese top officials agreed to form a government headed by Najib Mikati after a year of governance vacancy and a country economically collapsed. The new cabinet of 24 ministers, led by Mikati, was announced by the president's office and later by the secretary general of the Council of Ministers, Mahmoud Makia. The new government must oversee a financial audit of the central bank and resume negotiations with the International Monetary Fund for a rescue package to stem Lebanon's collapse. McCarthy's cabinet is also expected to oversee general elections scheduled for next year. McCarthy, a businessman from Tripoli, served as prime minister in 2005 and from 2011 to 2013. He is widely seen as part of a failed uh, political elite, but his designation responds uh, to international pressure on Lebanon to form a government in order to receive financial aid for its crippled economy. The high-level delegation of the Economic Community of West African States, ECOWAS, arrived on Friday in Guinea uh, to address uh, the coup crisis in the uh, African nation, uh, where new uh, laws uh, and reforms uh, have been imposed in the last hours. Conakry, the capital of the country, reports a sudden normality after the coup commanded by Lieutenant Colonel Mamadi uh, Dumbuya. Dumbuya and his junta will meet with the ECOWAS mission made up of the foreign minister of Ghana, Nigeria, Burkina Faso, Togo, and the president of the commission himself, Jean-Claude Cassis. The mission's deployment uh, was decided after Guinea was suspended from the bloc's institutions due to the military uprising and the arrest of the president Alpha Conde. Despite strong domestic support, the military junta is also exposed to sanctions of organizations such as the African Union and ECOWAS itself. The African Union said on Friday it was suspending Guinea after a coup in the West African country. The Pan-African body said on Twitter it decided to suspend the Republic of Guinea from all AU activities and decision-making bodies. The AU had condemned the military takeover and called for the release of Conde, who became the country's first democratically elected president in 2010. The AU's Political Affairs uh, Peace and Security Council said it called on its commission chief, uh, Moussa Fakir, to engage with a uh, stakeholders uh, in the region on the crisis. The UN refugee agency said Friday more than 1,200 uh, civilians have been killed this year in the insecure provinces of North Kivu and Ituri in Eastern Democratic Republic of Congo. Uh, and its partners have recorded more than 1,200 civilian deaths 
and 1,100 reported rapes this year in North Kivu and Ituri provinces, as well as at least 25,000 human rights abuses this year alone. It is estimated that more than one million Congolese have been internally displaced in 2021 uh, in the country's east. Despite government efforts to reduce uh, the abuses of armed groups, our teams continue to hear horrific accounts of sexual violence, extreme violence, extortion, and looting. Anti-government protesters in Bangkok staged a car convoy protest demanding the release of their core protest leaders. The leading activists are being held under pretrial detention on several charges, including inciting unrest and violating the emergency decree imposed by the government to curb the pandemic. Protesters on motorbikes and trucks waved flags honked horns and flashed uh, the three-fingered salute while en route uh, to the criminal court to submit a letter appealing to the court to grant bails to their leaders. For over a year, student-led pro-democracy protests have been uh, taking place regularly on the streets of Bangkok and other Thai cities with demands uh, for sweeping political reforms. We're demanding the uh, release of, of seven activists who were wrongfully imprisoned and uh, there were no proper court sentence and there were no there were no um, court dates or anything that just that would that was just the police um, arresting them uh, and, and they have every right to apply for bail and granted bail We've come to the end of this news brief. You can find these and many other stories on our website at Telesur English. You can also follow us on social media for all the latest news. We're on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and Telegram. For Telesur English, I'm Bray Gomez. Thank you for watching.